We built this island well over a year ago and we either don't really use it or we stand or sit at it super awkwardly. So I finally decided to build some stools for it because I'm obviously just too cheap to go buy some. So today I'm gonna show you how to build these super sturdy, super affordable and super snazzy stools for your island. As you'll see later in the video, I did run into a few hiccups, but that is to be expected. And that's what I'm here for, to make the mistakes so that you don't have to. I am here to help you build a piece of furniture that you will have for the rest of your life, that you can pass down to your children and your children's children and your children's children's children. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more super trendy, budget-friendly ways to decorate your home. Also check me out on Instagram at Timber and T with a little underscore at the end for more behind the scenes. First thing we're gonna do is cut all of the pieces for the base and seat of our stool with the exception of the arch pieces. I used two x two birch for this whole project. Rather than buying two x twos though, I used a two x 10 since that's what I had on hand. My legs were cut at 21 inches with five degree angle on both ends. The bottom crossbars were cut at 14 and a quarter inches and the top ones are 11 and a half inches with five degree angles cut at both ends with the angles going in towards each other unlike the four legs where the angles go parallel to each other. The shorter crossbars were all cut at six inches and do not have angled ends. For my seat, I used seven 2x2s cut at 17 inches. I drew out a template for the groove in my saddle seat, which you can find a link to in the description below. I cut one using the bandsaw and then traced it onto the rest of the pieces, making sure to rotate my pieces to the side so that my grain remains as it is once they're cut. Once I figured out the best way to arrange them, I glued them together, brushing glue on both adjoining sides. Then I clamped them together, placing two clamps on the bottom and one on the top to help prevent bowing. You could also use a biscuit joiner or pocket screws to assemble these pieces, or use fewer, wider pieces. Once it was dry, I sanded it down. I started with a grinding disc to get rid of all the ridges and then finished with an orbital sander with 120 and then 150 grit sanding pads. I scraped the glue off the bottom and sanded it with a belt sander using fairly coarse paper. Once I got the seat sanded down, I used my table saw to trim the edges. Once everything was straight and smooth, I routed the edges using a quarter round bit and then gave it one more final sand. I started working on my legs. I started by making the front pieces and a matching back piece. I arranged the pieces where I wanted them, measuring four inches from the bottom and keeping the top pieces flush with the top of the legs. Then I marked a straight line at each intersection so I knew which angle my dowels needed to go in at, since some of them will have to be on five degree angles. For the long legs, I cut a small piece of wood that would angle the wood five degrees horizontally so that my dowel hole would go in at the proper angle. I used a one inch Forstner bit for this part. I chose to assemble my stool using one inch dowling, but you could use a domino joiner or screws to assemble all the pieces. For the crossbars, I used another small piece of wood that would angle the wood five degrees vertically so that my dowel hole would go in straight. 
I cut my one inch dowel into two inch pieces so each of my dowel holes needs to be one inch in depth and one inch wide. Measuring needs to be very precise for the dowel hole so that you don't end up in trouble later like I did. Keep in mind that your front and back pieces and all of their holes need to be identical in order for your stool to be square. I used, probably way too much, LePage wood glue to assemble and then clamp my stool together. clamp five degree angles, I cut little blocks that were five degrees on one side to make it more square and easier to clamp. Once it was dry, I scraped all of the glue off with a chisel. Now it's time for the short pieces that attach the front and back leg. The two pieces on the bottom are slightly different than the two pieces on the top. All of the pieces are placed flat in a vise, but I used a half inch bit and a half inch dowel for the top pieces since it'll be intersecting with the dowel previously used for assembly. I realized that these top pieces also needed to be cut at a five degree angle on the long side in order for it to sit flush with the other pieces. To do this, I simply turned the blade on my table saw to five degrees and ran my pieces through. For the bottom pieces, I used the 1 inch Forstner bit again. Then I give the whole thing another sand. These pieces are just optional flair. I drew on my design, which you can find a link to in the description below, and cut it out using the bandsaw. I marked where each piece fit best, glued them, and clamped them in place. For extra support, you could put a half inch dowel through each end of the arch. So I went to go do my final dry fit of my stools today and when I put them all together I realized that they were a little bit cockeyed and like a little bit out of square and all it takes is for one little dowel hole to be off and it kind of twists the whole stool out of shape. And I think this is probably a common problem with projects like this where there's a lot of little angles. It's not even something that you would even necessarily notice, it's just a little gap where it shouldn't be or if you look at it at just the right angle, it looks a little off. So now that I have calmed down and stopped crying, because that's what I do when I get frustrated, I'm gonna show you how to fix it. I screwed a couple pieces of scrap wood to my table using a square to check my stools since I noticed a few pieces looked twisted. I figured out where my dowels were not lining up filled them in, sawed them off, and re-drilled them so that they lined up perfectly with the other holes. I have no idea how I managed to do it, but you can see how far off my holes were. Now it's time for final assembly. Make sure you do a final dry fit with no glue. Then I recommend marking exactly what piece and what dowel goes where, because some pieces may fit slightly better in one spot than another, and you don't want to find that out once you've already started gluing. If some of your dowels are extra tight or need some encouragement, you can use a mallet and a scrap piece of wood as to not damage your stool to bang it into place.
Once you've got it glued up, clamp it and leave it to dry. Once it's dry, chisel off any excess glue and give it one more final sand. To attach your legs to your seat, I drilled four holes, followed by a countersink hole, and then used two by eight wood screws. I used a wood conditioner to prevent blotchiness and then stained it using Early American Stain by Minwax. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and make sure you click that little notification bell so that you can stay up to date on all the super trendy, budget-friendly ways to decorate your home.